all and welcome to a very special episode of Animal Watch. Winter is here. has intoxicated the world with its incredible storylines, mythical creatures, and bloodthirsty characters. One of the amazing mythical creatures that has really intoxicated fans has been the beautiful direwolves. So who exactly are the wolf actors behind these incredible characters? Are they real life beings or simply animated characters? Today, I will blow the top off the mystery behind these beautiful creatures and tell you who are the wolf and wolf dog actors behind the dire wolves of Game of Thrones. Direwolves of Game of Thrones are all powerful magical beings who grow to epic proportions compared to a normal wolf. They are not usually seen south of the wall, so when the Stark family find a dead mother direwolf in the forest after being gored by a stag, they are obviously shocked and worried to how this wolf had wandered south. Five baby pups are found clinging to the body of their dead mother. It is suggested that it would be best to kill the pups due to the fear of what they will become as adults. However, just before the first pup is stabbed, Jon Snow suggests that it is a sign that they've happened to find five baby direwolves, as the direwolf is the sigil of the House of Stark. And strangely, there are five pups, one for each of the Stark children. The pups are collected and just as Jon Snow is about to leave the carcass, a small whimper is heard and a sixth puppy is pulled from the mother's body, a small white pup with red eyes. The others chuckle and say that that one must obviously be Jon's pup as it's the runt of the litter and Jon is the bastard sibling. The pups grow fast and we follow their stories throughout. Grey Wind is Rob Stark's wolf and is a beautiful grey wolf which is seen in both his juvenile and adult stages throughout the series. He is named Grey Wind for his ability to run like the wind. Sadly, after Rob is killed at the Red Wedding, Grey Wind is killed too and his severed head is attached to the body of Rob Stark and grossly paraded through the streets. Shaggy Dog is Rickon Stark's wolf, a beautiful dark coloured wolf, which too sadly comes to a sticky end when Rickon is killed on the battlefield. Summer is Bran Stark's wolf, a beautiful creamy coloured wolf which guards the young Bran with everything he possesses. Again this poor wolf comes a cropper at the hands of the White Walkers who have crossed south of the wall. His bravery protecting Bran has meant his tragic end. Will Summer become a White Walker direwolf in Series 8? I really hope not. Only time will tell. Lady is Sansa Stark's gentle and peaceful wolf. This beautiful and docile wolf never reaches her adult phase as she is condemned to death by the evil Cersei after Arya's wolf Nymeria bites Cersei's son Joffrey. Arya, desperate to save Nymeria's life, chases her beloved wolf off into the forest, but the evil Cersei gets revenge by condemning Lady to death in place of Nymeria. It is one of the saddest scenes as Ned Stark insists he must kill this beautiful wolf in order to make sure she has a clean death, instead of being hacked to death by one of Cersei's guardsmen. 
Viewers are given an exciting taste of Nymeria's return in Series 7 when a huge pack of wolves descends upon Arya in the forest. It seems that Arya is about to be attacked by these wolves when a huge, immense direwolf steps up centre stage. And this is when Arya sees that it's her once beloved Nymeria. Now, if no one got goosebumps at this part of the series, then you shouldn't be watching Game of Thrones. What is to lie in store for Nymeria and her part she will play in the final episode? Only time will tell. And finally, we have Ghost. Yes! the main direwolf of the entire series, as we see Ghost the most out of all the wolves. He has survived and grown huge despite being the runt of the litter. He is the only one with white fur and bright red eyes. Is it purposeful that Ghost should be a survivor, as Jon Snow becomes more powerful and more possibly lined up to take the Iron Throne? Only time will tell, but it's going to be exciting finding out. Now guys, I've had so many comments in my comment box asking for me to bring you the information about the actors behind the direwolves in Game of Thrones that I have made a special effort to research this for you today. I have gone behind the scenes, I've spoken to people and I've found out for you today who exactly are the dogs and the wolves behind these amazing characters. Well, let's start with the fact that the very young the direwolves look very dog-like. They look very, very different to their adult phase. Well, that is because they are actually dogs. As puppies removed from their mother, the cast of wolves were sourced from Northern Inuit breeders in the UK, as firstly, it is far easier to work with dogs than it would be to work with captive baby wolves. There are far more dog puppies available on tap than wolf puppies, and at that age, it didn't really matter, just as long as they looked wolfish and cute. Northern Inuits are a dog breed, which was started by crossing Huskies, Malamutes and German Shepherds together in the hope to create a wolfy looking dog without any wolf content. Some people feel that Northern Inuits have a long way to go before they look anything like a real wolf. But personality-wise, they are much easier to work with than a scared and untrusting wolf, so it would have made sense to use these dogs for ease of filming. The juvenile smaller stages of Summer, Grey Wind, Ghost, Lady, Nymeria and Shaggy Dog are all played by Northern Inuits. I am told that the litter was sourced from breeders in Ireland as they were filming on location there. Well, the beautiful Northern Inuit Zuni, bred by Malik Northern Inuits and who plays Sansa Stark's wolf lady, is actually now living with the actress who played Sansa. After acting alongside Zuni, actress Sophie Turner fell in love with her and asked the breeder if she could permanently adopt Lady. Lady has been a mother to a few litters, so she is now living out her retirement with Sophie a happy ending for a wolf which ended so tragically on screen. Summer and Grey Wind, aka Odin and Thor, who played the teeny tiny puppy phases of the direwolves, have now been adopted by direwolf tours in Ireland and permanently live in a Game of Thrones mythical world alongside role-playing owners in magnificent attire. Direwolf Tours takes people out to some of the locations that Game of Thrones were filmed at in Ireland, accompanied by these two beautiful Northern Inuits. <laughs> Sorry, I mean huge, scary direwolves. Well, Inuits or direwolves, they are both extremely beautiful and I imagine the experience would be a fun and exciting one for Game of Thrones fans. I'll pop the link in the description below.
older juvenile Summer, who you can see here lying on Bran's bed, is most definitely either a Czechoslovakian wolfdog or a Czech wolfdog mix, and see how similar he is to my male wolfdog here. I do not know the owner of this dog, and again possibly is owned and supplied by an animal supply company called Birds and Animals. One thing is for sure, the colour match to adult summer is not the best, as one is brown and one is creamy beige. Zuni, who plays Lady, well her grandson Indy plays the young Nymeria, who Arya chases off into the forest. I have been told that Indy has remained with the same animal film supply company, Birds and Animals, and is living his life as an actor dog, with other credits to his name. I did try to contact Birds and Animals, but nobody wanted to get back to me. The young ghost is played by Cooper, a striking white male Northern Inuit. Again, I do not know who now owns Cooper. I would like to think that like Lady, aka Zuni, he is happily living in a lovely home somewhere in the world. Drop me a line if you have Cooper. There is one scene I'm told where another white Inuit female plays Ghost. Can you tell which scene it is? The identity of Shaggy Dog is a bit of a mystery as it has been said that Indy may have played this character too, with a little help from the makeup artist to darken him down. Some sources have also told me that this character may have possibly been played by a few dogs, one of which was a Czechoslovakian wolf dog mix and was possibly owned by birds and animals who supply animals for the film industry. But as they haven't got back to me, sadly I'm unable to confirm this. Now let's talk adult direwolves. It is obvious as the series trundles along that the appearance of the direwolves suddenly and shockingly changes into that of real genuine wolves. Like Daenerys' dragons, we can see the wolves going through stages in their lives on the way to their final colossal size. We get to see the following wolves in their magnificent adult wolfy looking stages. Greywind, Summer, Nymeria when she appears to Arya after ages in the forest, and of course Ghost. So which out of these adult direwolves are played by real live wolves? Well, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but only one of the wolves is actually played by a real life wolf, and it's Ghost, played by a white wolf called Quigley. And even then, Quigley doesn't get much screen time and a lot of his screen time is taken up by a CGI double due to the fact that he lives so far away in Calgary, Canada. He belongs to Andrew Simpson of Instinct Animals for Film. Due to the constraints of using a real life wolf on set, the scenes with the real wolf Quigley were all shot in Canada as travel for a wolf is stressful and unkind. At one point, the writer George R. R. Martin made an announcement that the wolf behind the character Ghost had in fact died. He tweeted, in loving memory of the real life Ghost from the wild spirit wolf sanctuary. He passed this week and he will be missed, RIP. The press ran away with this story only to later find out that this ghost was in fact a wolf that George had named after the character in his books and was not the real on-screen wolf actor. There are so few scenes with any of the direwolves in, to the disappointment of fans, as the cost to animate such characters is huge and what with the massive cost for backdrops and dragon animation, the direwolves have had to take a back seat in most of the series. The scene where adult direwolf Nymeria approaches Arya in the forest looks like they did use close-ups of a wolf or a wolf dog, possibly even an Inuit. And once you get in really close, the face just doesn't look wolf-like. But it doesn't look as though the wolf was in the actual scene alongside the actress on the same day in the same room. And the close-ups look as though they were either stock footage or taken from a green screen shoot, which had been done to tie in with the wide animation. As for the other wolves, 
Well, they are all animation, sadly. This is due to the huge production costs behind the hit TV series. This great cost has meant that, sadly, fans have not been able to see the direwolves as much as they may have liked to. Just to give you an idea of the huge work and costs that go into an animation, please watch this little clip and see just how hard it is to build up a character for use in a film. I've been told there's been a huge influx in abandoned northern Inuits and wolf dog puppies after the Game of Thrones hit TV series has caused literally thousands of people to go out there and buy these puppies. Both northern Inuits and wolf dogs are incredibly difficult dogs to keep there. They're very lively, they eat a lot of food, they can be scratchy, they can be boisterous, sometimes they can be dog aggressive. The list goes on. They are not these beautiful, wonderful fantasy creatures that everybody seems to think they are. However, if you do really think that you are the type of person that can have a dog like Kumi here, then please think about going to one of the rescues. There are rescues across the UK and the USA that deal with abandoned wolf dogs and northern type breeds. I'll put some in the link at the bottom of my video if you give a home to one of these beautiful creatures, then you really are saving a life. And in a sense, Game of Thrones has helped with that. So if you loved my Game of Thrones special, then please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel below. If you've got any other ideas for films that you would like me to make, then please also pop them in the suggestion box below. So funnus check, which means Bye in Dothraki. Bye for now.